Welcome to dbscan clustering. dbscan is one of the popular density-based clustering algorithms and in this video we shall cover all the key concepts of density-based clustering along with the five steps in dbscan algorithm. But first let's start off with a motivation of why we need a new clustering method. As we saw in k-means clustering video, k-means finds spherical clusters. So this is good when your data generating process is a mixture of Gaussian spherical densities and that you're happy to live with equal variance assumptions and that hard cluster assignment to your data. Next, we also saw in the Gaussian mixture model video that Gaussian mixture models based clustering tends to find elliptical clusters. So this is good when your data generating process is a mixture of Gaussian elliptical densities with scaled variance and you need soft cluster assignments. But what if your data is neither Gaussian mixture of sphericality or elliptical in nature? How do we proceed to identify red versus blue clusters as shown in this picture? Which model would identify these clusters? K-means will not help. Gaussian mixture models also will not help. So we need a newer approach, which is based on the density of the data. And dbscan is one of the popular density-based algorithms that we're going to cover in detail in this video. Now, in dbscan, there are six concepts that form the foundation of the algorithm. Let's cover each of them in detail and understand how it works. First is the epsilon, which refers to the distance that acts as a boundary for a point that is calculated by drawing a circle around the point. It is also called the ESP. And in this picture, there are two points in which the epsilon is shown with E and highlighted with a green arrow. The next concept is an epsilon neighborhood, which refers to the set of points within distance epsilon from a given point. Essentially, it contains all the points contained in the circle where the radius of the circle is epsilon. Let's look at this example. For point P in below diagram, we have three points part of the epsilon neighborhood, which we have highlighted in red arrows. For point Q, we have only two points in the epsilon neighborhood, which we have shown with blue arrows. Next, we are going to look at how dbscan classifies its points based on the density in the epsilon neighborhood. Core point refers to any point which has at least x elements or points in its epsilon neighborhood, where x is a hyperparameter. In this example, we take x as 3, then p is a core point, but q is not a core point. The next concept is a border point which refers to any point that doesn't qualify as a core point but is within the epsilon neighborhood of a core point. In this example, Q is a border point since it's within epsilon's P's epsilon boundary. The next concept is how dbscan classifies points as noise points. So a noise point is a point with an epsilon neighborhood containing less than x number of points and is not within the epsilon neighborhood of a core point. In our example, R is a noise point. Now that we understand epsilon neighborhood and about the core, border, and noise points, Let's look at a very important concept called density reachability, which ties all of them together for clustering purposes. Essentially, density reachability refers to the ability of being able to reach from one point to another via epsilon neighborhood traversal. It also enables dbscan to leverage core points that are connected with each other for reaching a border points. In this example, U, a border point, is density reachable from V, a core point. And it is worth noting that this is an asymmetric relationship. 
meaning we, a core point, is not reachable from you, the border point. And in our example, to summarize, we can say u is density reachable from we. Now let's go over the five key steps in dbscan algorithm. So in a loop, the first step is to select any point that is unassigned to a cluster. Say point B is chosen. Now having chosen the point, we explore and retrieve all the neighbors of the points that are densely reachable from point P. Next, if the count of neighbors is below your hyperparameter X, then we mark the point as noise. But if the count of neighbors are above X, then we create a new cluster for P and assign all neighboring points to the cluster. Lastly, we continue the loop until all points are assigned. So if all points are assigned, we exit the loop. The above five steps are a simplified pseudocode of the dbscan algorithm covering the most important implementation ideas. Now let's quickly review a few applications and use cases for dbscan. First, it's very useful for identifying and detecting networks in examples like social network, biological network, and even citation networks for research papers and books. It has also been used in medical image segmentation, like the example that is shown below for a dermoscopy, which was highlighted in Kokara's paper using dbscan in 2010. Those are the two important elements within the application space. And hooray, we have reached the end of this tutorial. We've covered the key concepts of this video, the motivation behind dbscan, the clustering concepts, the algorithm. If you found this video helpful, do subscribe and like the video. Until next video, good luck and stay safe.